Hi, my name is Claire Phillips. I'm currently a senior at Anderson County High School in Clinton, Tennessee, and this is Dr. Ernest Bernard from the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. He's been a professor here for over 40 years. Well, today we're going to demonstrate uh, commensalism with nematodes and millipedes. Okay, so what is the difference between a millipede and a centipede? Most people confuse the difference between the two. Well, they're two very different groups. They both, they both uh, uh, are really early groups on land, like four to five hundred million years ago. Uh, but centipedes are kind of flattened. Most of the species we see are brownish orange, and their legs are kind of splayed out the side. They're also predators. They have poison glands made from their first, the very first, their very first legs, and uh, they use those to catch their prey. Millipedes, on the other hand, are are rounder. Uh, they move more slowly. They have many more legs. I'll talk about the leg difference in a moment. And they're all vegetarians. None of them are harmful to people. Mm -hmm. Now, centipedes. Uh, you translate centipede as uh, basically hundred leggers, and millipedes, thousand leggers. If you think about the Latin centa and milla. Mm -hmm. But this, but centip but neither of them have legs as many legs as they, as as their name would suggest. Uh, it, when you get down to closer, a closer and finer detail, centipedes have one pair of legs per segment, and millipedes have two pairs of legs per segment. And millipedes would generally be considered to be cute compared to centipedes, which are nasty, which look look nastier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are millipedes easy to find, and where do you typically find them? Well, millipedes are actually pretty easy to find if you know what you're looking for. Uh, you can find them generally under in leaf piles, under leaves. Uh, under rotted wood, sometimes crawling around during the day at, at or uh, in, outside or at night, yeah. especially at night. And in fact, you can even occasionally find them in the house. I found a, a, a small millipede crawling in my kitchen last night. Hmm. And this is not uncommon. They do, they do just tend to wander and come on in. Yeah. Can you explain how a nematode gets inside the intestine of a millipede? Uh, sure. So these nematodes uh, live inside the intestine as, and they do, do all their development there. The, uh, the female nematodes lay eggs and those eggs are, are, are uh, sent out in the environment via, the, via defecation or basically the poop of the millipede. Mm -hmm. But in insects and arthropods we tend to call that frass, not poop, so I'm going to call it frass, okay? okay. Uh, so the frass is, is uh, dropped by the millipede after it's used up the nutrition it can get out of it. Then other millipedes crawling along will be eating dead leaves or other tissue, and they will also eat, they will eat uh, each other's frass. Mm -hmm. So if eggs are inside the frass, they'll eat those eggs, and the eggs will then hatch inside the intestine of the millipede that just ate them. The eggs have, most, mostly have very thick shells, and they can last for weeks or months in the environment. They will, but they will not hatch until they're inside a millipede. What does commensalism mean? Well, commensalism is an association of two organisms, um, one of which seems to confer, get no benefit and the other gets some kind of benefit. In the case of millipedes and nematodes, the nematodes are feeding primarily on the bacteria in the millipede gut, in the intestine. The, what they're actually consuming mostly are the bacteria that are in there. Millipedes don't really digest their food very well. They, they rely on bacteria to break down the break down the organic tissue, the leaf tissue they eat. And uh, this, this provides billions and billions of bacteria in their intestine that the, that the nematodes then eat. Mm -hmm. So even though you might think, okay, I've got hundreds of millipedes in me, or hundreds of nematodes inside me, and they, that, should, that should hurt me. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. Most larger millipedes, in fact, practically all the larger millipedes we've looked at contain nematodes, and it does mm -hmm. not seem to hurt the millipedes. There must be plenty of food in there for everybody. Yeah. How many different species or genera can we expect to find in the intestine of a millipede? Well, in our studies in North America, we have found up to eight different species, and usually those are eight different genera, inside a single millipede. It could be low as, actually, we have found some millipedes, that, a few that do not have, typically don't have any nematodes, but most of them have at least one, usually three or four, and sometimes as many as eight. So it's pretty diverse inside there. Okay. And finally, what are we going to be demonstrating today? All right, today we're going to be uh, taking a millipede 
nice one that was collected around here. We're going to be dissecting it, removing the intestine, opening the intestine, and examining the nematodes inside. Today we're going to dissect uh, millipede number 1005 in our study, wow. Aphaloria montana. Uh, very, very common species in this part of the, of the United States. Um, and so we have found it to be a good source for nematodes. We've already done number 1004 today, and now we're going to do 1000 earlier on, and now we're going to do 1005. All right. So, well, 1005 happens to be a male. It has, uh, we, there are gonopods on the male, there are external organs that, that, that tell us it's a male. So, this, so the first step really in doing this is to remove the head, then loosen up the, uh, the last couple of segments on the body, and just pull mm -hmm. the intestine out. When we dissect these, we're doing this for scientific purposes. We don't derive pleasure in uh, dissecting millipedes. We mm -hmm. find them uh, attractive and fascinating individuals. Uh, but it's necessary to get live, live nematodes in order to determine whether determine the numbers of nematodes we have, their diversity in different species of millipedes we look at, and whether they're threatened by nematodes coming from invasive millipedes mm. that have become imported in the United States. So I'm simply going to sever his head, the first couple of uh, segments in the head. We'll be putting those in the body directly into alcohol in order to uh, preserve, preserve it for uh, studies of their morphology and taxonomy. Hmm. Now I'm grabbing a hold of the, I've, I've broken the antennal, the, the anal segments loose a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to yank and slowly but surely, usually, drag the intestine out. And here is a millipede intestine. So that's where the nematodes can be found? The nematodes are going to be found in the posterior part mostly. In the anterior part we really don't find any, so the head. We know from experience this very anterior end never has any debris in it. It actually has a yellowish uh, jelly substance. But I'm going to start opening where I first see some food. That's where the intestine is dark. And I really don't expect to see anything at this end because this, they, you rarely, rarely find them front end. But I'm pulling it out anyway. If nematodes are present, they will usually start Wow, there are some right up in the front end. And that's so, rare, isn't it? It's right. They're right. There's so much tangle. Okay. There are nematodes right here. There's one right there. This is really, a really unusual. There's always more than what you can see. Right now we have nearly 20 pulled out of there, just out of the end where they're not supposed to be. There's an, now that I just found a very tiny nematode that's something else. So they look like little worms. They are. Almost. Well, nematodes are often thought of as, they are worm-like. They're not worms. They are their own separate phylum, but they are worm-like in shape. Mm. What we would say is vermiform, which is worm, which is worm-shaped. So these are almost all Rhygonema, but there is a little tiny one there. I don't know what it is. And we're not high enough magnification for me to tell. We've been, after you do a thousand of these nemato, uh, millipedes, it becomes, oh my goodness. Can you see that? Can you see that coming out? They are just pouring out of yes. the intestine right now. How many species do you see as of right now? <laughs> wow. <laughs> They are just, there are hundreds of them pouring out of here. Um, right now, it's hard to tell. There's so many of them. I would have to go, I can go to higher power for a moment, which, uh, and, and take a quick look. Right now, they look mostly like just Rhygonema. Mm -hmm. But this genus Rhygonema, we find mostly in the, uh, we find, we can find throughout the posterior part of the intestine. Other kinds of nematodes occur in millipedes we see uh, further back, usually further back. Mm. So even if we have all this Rhygonema right now, there are probably more further back, different kinds that we mm. haven't seen yet. I'm just gonna go quickly to higher power and see if I see anything else. Oh yeah, we have, um, 
gonna turn on the light source here for a moment. Oops. Okay. All right, so what do we have? Well, we do have lots of Rhagonema. Most of the nematodes were in that anterior part right there, wow. the, where we first went into it, because we're kind of in the middle now, and there's not, there are some, but not many. Not as many as before, yeah. Are they hard to count with that many? Uh, these, well, these, these will be particularly difficult because there's so much uh, intestinal matter. Mm -hmm. But we will uh, we'll use a series of sieves to eliminate some of that. Oh. But for the most part, we'll be sim sim moving them one by one into little piles, mm -hmm. separating them into different groups, and then we will be preserving them for these nematodes for future study. Thank you. For You're quite welcome. Us. I've enjoyed it.